Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. had it right you know looking at this campaign the one that we're all watching with astonishment i feel that if we went ahead a hundred years from now to the year 3016 and we look back upon the year 2016 in america someone could write that it was the cheese heads versus the knockwurst heads that one party wore a block of cheese on their heads and the other party wore a knockwurst on their heads that's about as much sense as i can make out of this the corruption on both sides is equivalent. The people who represent both sides are about the equivalent. There is almost no difference in the corruption and the hypocrisy of either side, which is why a true independent such as myself, Michael Savage, is misunderstood and reviled by both sides and distrusted by both sides because they don't own me. And by not owning me, they cannot control me. And by not controlling me, I am a threat to them. Now, the same goes for Donald Trump because in all of my years in radio, I have never seen a candidate who is leading the primaries, every which way you look at it, he's leading, and yet he's attacked by both parties. He's attacked by the left. He's attacked by Republican shells. He's attacked by Jane Fonda and Republican shells. He's attacked by Jane Fonda and the Hollywood idiots, as you would expect. But then on the other side, you have the constitutional cronyism that you can you can cannot believe this the crony constitutionalists are ripping up the shreds at the national review how do you explain this how do you explain this hatred for donald trump this imperfect man how do you explain it because he is an independent and he's not either a cheesehead nor a knockwurst head and so you have the traitors at the national review uh, which is basically a gop front magazine as you well know ripping him to shreds. Then you have the, the sad sack, Glenn Beck, the man who talked about his hemorrhoids and broke into tears on the air and worked his way up to the top of the heap. I mean, what does it tell you about the audience for conservatives? If Glenn Beck, who spent his entire career talking about his hemorrhoids and breaking down on the air, has become so prominent as a result of this, what does it tell you about that? That people like William Crystal editor of the Weekly Standard, which I've affectionately entitled the Weekly Standard, W, you know, you get the picture, W-E-A-K-L-Y Standard for years, John Port Horitz, editor of the so-called great Jewish intellectual magazine Commentary. I'm sure they're all very smart people. They're so smart that they're shooting themselves in the foot. They're so smart that they're working for Hillary Clinton. And that's why I say to you, I'm not a cheesehead nor a knockwurst head. And so I want to go back a little bit before we go into the issue of corruption in both parties. And we'll talk about corruption in both parties, the Republicans as well as the Democrats, and why they now agree with Jane Fonda on that Trump must be stopped. And we will show you how deep the corruption runs in the Republican Party in particular. We know it runs deeply in the Clinton and the uh, Obama administration. That's a given. We understand it. We see it every day. And you, you think the Republican Party is not corrupt? Well, I'll take you all the way back to Ronald Reagan's administration. And I will talk today about the WedTech scandal and the history of Edwin Meese, Ronald Reagan's attorney general, who was forced to resign because of corruption. And you will see that Edwin Meese had a deep role in that scandal, such as Mises' efforts to help Bechtel Corporation build an oil pipeline in Saddam Hussein's Iraq. And the point is, it's not to dredge up old history, but to just show you that there's nothing new under the sun, and that both parties are corrupt, and that independents like myself are feared and hated because we're not part of the system. And they're panicking. 
They're panicking. That's the whole story in a nutshell. And I want to start way back when, not on Edwin Meese and his corruption. I want to go all the way back to something else. And that is the fact that uh, I've said before, the hippie movement, many of you think that the hippie movement was all bad. The hippie movement destroyed America. You think that the hippie movement and the 60s is what ruined America. But I don't agree with that. See, my position is quite different. It wasn't the hippie movement that was so bad. It was when the communists took control of the hippie movement that the hippie movement was subverted. And that's a very important show today. Because I'm going to talk to all of you out there who are thinkers, who are independent, all of you who are free spirits, who may identify as independents or as progressives even, or even as liberals. But you find yourself listening to Michael Savage. Yesterday I had a caller, a woman from Berkeley, California, who said she's a lifetime Democrat who voted for Obama. And she listens to my show and I asked her why. And she said because she wants the borders closed and that's why she's going to vote for Trump. She just simply is tired of living in the third world. She knows the threat of ISIS. And as you know, I've been covering the rape of young girls by these maniacs in ISIS. Because the UN is doing nothing about these rapes, the genocide against Christians, they're doing nothing. All my life, I have remembered the opening line, or the credits for the movie and the book, For Whom the Bell Tolls. It's really simple, it's three lines. Any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. That was so beautiful, was that well, whoever wrote like this, any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. That's from Hemingway's great novel, For Whom the Bell Tolls. That's the meaning of that. We're all part of humanity. And now we have an Islamo-fascist movement that has no humanity. They've stepped outside of humanity. They're killing indiscriminately. Christians, yes. Yazidis, yes. And now Muslims. They're killing Muslims because they're not true enough for them. The Sunni madmen in ISIS are killing Shiite Muslims. They declare that they're apostates, if you can believe this. It's too complicated for the average person to even understand this. But it reminds me of what's going on inside the conservative movement. There are those in the conservative movement who say, anyone who doesn't agree 100% with me is an apostate. Therefore, out of the party you go. You're not a conservative. You're a communist. If they could, they would kill them. Same as the Sunni madmen and ISIS, fanatics. And so what it boils down to, in a nutshell, is fanaticism, it's what's killing America. It's not the polarization that's killing America. No, that's not the issue. They missed the point. They missed the mark, as usual. It's not, it's not that. It's the fanaticism. And it's Obama who has brought the fanaticism to the surface, isn't it? Why do I say it's Obama who has brought fanaticism to the surface? Because he's a fanatic. He's an extremist and a fanatic. He has been his whole life. But he is the best salesman the fanatics on the radical, radical far left have ever found. He is so silk smooth at being a fanatic. He doesn't sound like a fanatic. He doesn't walk like a fanatic. He rarely talks like a fanatic. But a fanatic he is. His politics are extremely fanatical. They're extremely to the left of even the Democrat Party. And he has brought this polarization to the surface. And so we see the, 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 the political system has melted down. The hatred is such that, as I say, uh, people are excommunicated from the Democrat Party if they're not to the left enough. People are excommunicated from the uh, Republican Party if they're not, uh, you know, to the middle enough. So I have to go back a little bit. It's going to take me a while. It's a snowy day on the East Coast, I guess. Not yet. Hasn't hit in New York. I love the snow anyway. I like it out here. I like it out there. People are home, sheltering at home, they're listening to the radio, they're waiting to hear the story about the snow falling, the grocery shelves are bare. The kids love it. Kids love snowstorms. Daddy's home, mommy's home. They don't know that the father would rather be working because he's got to put bread on the table. Kids don't know any of that. They're innocent like our puppies. That's why we love our children. Isn't that why we love our children? Because you look in their eyes and you see how innocent they are. They don't understand anything about the real world. And we raise our children up from the time they're they come out of our wives' womb, and we see them as little innocent balls of 
protoplasm, hardly able to breathe on their own. And we care for them, and we protect them with our lives. And we raise them, and we try to make them as healthy as we can in mind and body and spirit. And then we send them off to the government schools, and they start coming home with ideas that are antithetical to everything we believe in. They're brainwashed by this evil, sick educational system. Then on top of it, you have Common Core, making them hate everything that's worth living for. And we wonder, how do we save our children from this evil, evil, creeping communism in the United States of America? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I ask the same question of the other side. How do we save ourselves from the evils of the crony constitutionalists on the other side? People who wrap themselves in the flag and are as dirty as those on the left. How do we do that? How do we deal with the National Review? Going, going out of their way to work for Hillary Clinton. And the reason that they want Hillary Clinton elected is because it will keep the money machine going. Thomas Sowell, Rich Lowry, John Fun, Brent Bazell, Glenn Beck, Edwin Meese. These are the conservative leaders trying to stop Trump. Dana Loesch, Michael Medved. They're good people. William Crystal, John Podhoretz, Mark Halperin, Andrew McCarthy, David McIntosh. These are some of the names you may recognize. Good people, I'm sure. But they're working for Hillary Clinton. Maybe they know this. Maybe they don't know it. Why would they rather have Hillary Clinton elected than Donald Trump? It's real simple. Because Hillary Clinton is part of the same system they've been a part of their entire professional lives. And as long as there's a, 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 a um, what is the word I'm looking for, an establishment Democrat in the White House, they'll have a job. They'll have a, a job pointing out and criticizing uh, her. But they'll have their job. It's cut out. It's Democrat-Republican. It goes back to what I said at the beginning. It's cheeseheads versus the knockwurst heads. And as long as there's a cheesehead team of supporters and a knockwurst team of supporters sitting in the bleachers screaming, I'm a cheesehead! Yay, cheeseheads! And then the other side of the stadium, you got the knockwurst heads sitting there in the snow. I'm a knockwurst head! You cheeseheads are stupid! Democrat-Republican, cheesehead, knockwurst head. Look at it a hundred years from now and take a look at how stupid this is. Take a look at how stupid this is while the world is being ravaged by a force not seen since Adolf Hitler. Back in a minute. I guess when I'm talking about cheese heads versus knockwurst heads, it's, it's impossible for people to even follow me. Maybe 1% of the audience gets the analogy. They're so rigidly locked into Democrat, Republican that they can't follow me. But I'm going to go down my own road anyway. I've done it my whole life. It's worked for me, so I'll continue to work my own way. There's nothing else I can do. I cannot pander to what I perceive to be the talk radio audience. Because the day I start doing that, I may as well leave because there is no audience called the typical talk radio audience. What you hear when you have people call the radio doesn't even represent the audience. Do you know that? I learned this the first week of talk radio in 1994. <clears throat> Callers are not representative in most ways of the audience. Most people don't call talk radio. They listen. They want to hear what I have to say, not what callers have to say, first of all. And I'll tell you something else about talk radio. In the beginning, in the 90s, there used to be a lot of argument. Back and forth, back and forth. We don't get that anymore. We get I love you calls, and that's all we get. Now, I don't understand why I take a caller if it's only about I love you. If you want to disagree with me, fine. If you want to curse me and run me down, I'm not going to take your call. It's a waste of your time, and it's bad. My time, rather, and it's bad radio. But I want to go back to the issue of the cheeseheads versus the knockwurst heads that I was talking about. And I want to talk to you about those of you who understand what the show is about as an independent why I support Trump as an independent. He's an independent. So he's not conservative enough. Oh, they went crazy. They threw him. They want to throw him to the wolves, and they want Hillary Clinton to win. That's what it comes down to. Just look ahead. Look beyond your nose. Cruz can't be president, period, end of story. He's unelectable. I've spoken to a lot of real smart people at very high, in very high places. They all say, and people in the media who understand these things, there's as much looks and presentation but you need some intellect for this. You need some history for this. you got to look ahead. you got to get away from your own pockets. 